Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at the Plex uh, Media Server. And what we're going to do this week is take a look uh, in a little bit more detail on how you edit uh, the metadata that gets imported into your different media uh, when you set up your Plex server. Now, what will happen is depending on the information that you have on your files, uh, Plex will either be able to match that information or it will come back uh, a little bit off because it's trying to attempt to do a match for you and it might not always be accurate. Now, overall it does a pretty good job. Uh, I've had most of my uh, movies and, and things like that matched up. Uh, but there are a few things that are off and so I just want to show you how you can uh, kind of dig into uh, the metadata of your movies and go ahead and fix that. So here we are in the Plex uh, web interface. Uh, this is the media manager where you get to manage your library and all of the different things that you have uh, inside of Plex. And you can see here I've got some recently added items. Uh, I've got uh, Star Trek. I had uh, purchased this off of iTunes and so it comes with a, a bunch of different uh, trailers and things like that in different languages and so it sort of added all of those. And then you'll notice here I've got uh, Star Trek uh, Into Darkness which is the brand new Star Trek movie but I don't own that in my library so I know there's something off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on that and it's going to take me into uh, this edit screen for my uh, information here. So you can see this is the uh, the movie here. I've got the main movie screen here. If I just click the edit pencil, let me just do that for a second. It brings down this drop down and I can go ahead and choose a different album artwork if I want to do that. Now again, assuming that this was the right movie, maybe I didn't like this artwork. I want to try this one for instance. All I'd have to do is click that and it will go ahead and change it over uh, inside Plex itself and make that change. Uh, but since again, this isn't uh, the one I'm dealing with, I'm just going to push that down. Uh, all of this other information on here, uh, Plex pulled down itself, and so I can edit that uh, if I want to. Now, on the sidebar, you can see we've got the various, uh, you know, we've got a toolbar over here with things we can do. If I click uh, Edit, uh, for instance, uh, all of these fields open up, and all I've got to do is go through and edit these things. And I can go ahead and make the changes that I need to make and then save them. I'm going to click Cancel because what I want to do is just uh, walk you through this. I can click Refresh, which will basically just refresh the information again. It will go into a search again and pull down the information. Uh, I can also analyze it. And so I can click uh, this Analyze and you can see down below uh, it's going to process uh, this particular uh, movie and just make sure that everything is okay with it. It's finished processing it and it left it all alone. So it still thinks it's, it's uh, that particular movie. I can mark it uh, the movie is watched. I can also go in here and fix uh, an incorrect match. And so when I click that, uh, it's going to search for possible matches. Uh, and it's going to ask me, you know, I can match using, you can see this little drop down here, uh, the different databases that it has. I can do a custom search if I want to. And then it'll go and find that information. Uh, now the problem is, is I, uh, this isn't a right match, so I don't want to do uh, any searches uh, for it. You can see it's actually doing that right now. But, uh, but when I do this, you'll notice uh, across here, you can see it gives me where this particular movie is located. And you can see that it's a Star Trek trailer in French uh, that was sort of included with the uh, download I had uh, for iTunes. And you can see these searches are happening right now where it's searching for that information. It's trying to match it up. And so I can select a movie from the list below. So if I select that particular uh, movie, I can do that. And now it's downloading the uh, metadata for Star Trek uh, on the server. And when that's done, it will actually replace all of that information in here. So while that's kind of working, let me just show you some of the other things over here. I can unmatch if I want to so that it won't match this file anymore. And so that way it'll keep it outside the matches and, and won't have the wrong information in there. And that comes in handy if you've got something like home movies or something like that, that uh, you don't want to have uh, it try to interpret the name of your home movie and end up importing uh, some other kind of movie poster and stuff like that because uh, it will end up doing that. Uh, you can split this apart if you want. And so if I click that, uh, it asks if you're sure you want to do that. I'm just going to say no because I don't want to split it apart. And what that means is you see the little four up here in the top? This is stacked with four uh, other movies that are under this particular one. And that's because I've got four uh, trailers uh, that are linked together in that folder, uh, probably with different language types. And so I can split those apart so they become four individual files or I can leave it uh, grouped together. And so I just want to leave it grouped because I'm going to want to change this for the entire group. Uh, you can see here I can sync it to a device. And what this allows me to do, and I'll show you when we look at the iOS devices, is you can sync uh, this particular movie to your device so that you can take it and watch it uh, offline. 
and so it allows you to sync to those different devices which is really a nice uh, a nice touch that they've added to this uh, you can also download the movie since it is your movie you can download it so if you're off-site you can download it uh, onto uh, your other computer or in those kinds of things and then finally I've got this little uh, media info right here if I just click this little I uh, what it does it gives me all of the different info on my media and this is where I can also check to see okay this I don't have this movie so why is it thinking it's that and you can see this again shows me the name of the movie that it's a Star Trek trailer in French okay and I can also view the XML if I want to so let's go ahead and edit this movie so we can uh, go ahead and make the changes that we need to make I'm just gonna click edit now that I know what the movie is and because I was uh, getting the metadata uh, you can see here that it says that the media is currently unavailable and that's because it was still uploading the different content from what I hit before so I'm gonna let that refresh and then I'll come back and let's see what it came up with and then we can fine-tune the editing okay here I am over on the screen now it's gone ahead and pulled down the metadata you can see that uh, it's uh, put up the appropriate movie poster uh, you can see that it's put 2009 like it should have been and so it's it's the right movie uh, you also notice it's lumped a few other uh, movies together uh, with that change that had the exact same uh, metadata on it so it's kind of stacked those together so that they'll have the exact same uh, interface like this which really uh, it, it makes it nice because it does a good job of putting those things together so again if I wanted to uh, edit those things I could click the edit pencil here and it brings up all of this detail now one of the things you might want to do uh, when you have edited these things and you want to keep it the same you don't want it to change on you is when you make changes if you click these little lock buttons here uh, for the different uh, areas that means that it won't do a search anymore you've locked these things in and so now when it does uh, a refresh or something like that to find more information it's not going to change these fields because you've chosen to lock them down and so I'd recommend recommend that if you change them by hand. Uh, probably not necessary in this case because I did uh, link it through their system. But, uh, but if you want to do that, this is a way to do that if you've made those changes. Just make sure those locks are there and then you can click Save. Uh, the other thing I can change is I can change uh, the poster. If I don't like that particular poster and I'd like to go with one of these, I can uh, change the poster uh, to make it match and uh, do that but uh, I kinda like the one that they pulled but you can see it pulls up a variety of posters that you can choose from uh, I can also change the background if I wanted to and so right now I've got this this in the background if I wanted one of these other ones to be the background I could make that change uh, let's say let's say I liked this one here uh, it's gonna go and make the change in the background uh, so that that'll happen so uh, it gives you the option to make various changes on on the uh, information you can see now the background has been changed to what I put on there and gives you some flexibility so that's how you work with uh, with your movies uh, to make those changes you would then do the same thing for uh, your television shows and those sorts of things uh, you would just edit it the same way that I just showed you here and so it allows you to customize your library a little bit to get it exactly the way you want it uh, with things like iTunes, uh, iTunes Music and things like that uh, those things are automatically pulled from iTunes itself so uh, you would edit those inside iTunes but uh, for movies and for television shows uh, and those that kind of media that's how you would edit that so that's all I have for this week I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.